Whether you're managing your project, tracking data, or automating processes, these five formulas will help you build out effective solutions in Smartsheet. My name is Will Van Musker, and I have been working at Smartsheet for over seven years. By the end of this video, you will have a firm grasp on five different formulas that can help you improve your solutions. Let's get started. So today we're gonna to review five different formulas that are powerful in optimizing your solution. But an important part to understand about formulas is that they are like tools in your tool belt. When I tell you a specific formula, it's not like I'm gonna have the exact situation for you. Different formulas can help you in many different situations. Much like a hammer or a screwdriver, they are tools that you use in different scenarios that will allow you to create a powerful solution. It's important to know when to use a formula and also when to take advantage of other features and functionality within Smartsheet. I have seen too many consultants and users build out formulas that may be really cool looking, but they don't actually help as much as you would think. When you build a complex formula out, many times users that have to leverage the solution every day can get confused by them. So there are times to build out really powerful, useful formulas, but it's important to know, are you actually building it in the most efficient way possible? As reports and automations can also lend a hand in building out an effective solution. Using features like summary and grouping and reports can calculate for graphs instead of having to actually build out a formula. Let's take a look at some of the key formulas that can be built out to improve your solutions. Before we dive into formulas, it's important to know what Smartsheet has available for you as a user. There is this formula handbook dashboard. It is a solution that is pre-built within the Smartsheet solution space. And I recommend leveraging that to understand what are all the features and functionality that Smartsheet is aware of and want you to know about. This dashboard right here will help you know about the function glossary, which shows you all the different types of functions in Smartsheet. Uh, an example project plan where you see some of that formula work in action. Advanced formula examples where you can see really complex formulas more. And AI prompt guide. We're not going to go over AI today as much in our formula building, but we're definitely going to share more on that later. It's important to know how to get this as well. To access this formula handbook dashboard, you can hit the plus sign and click view all templates. This, uh, this allows you to see all the templates Smartsheet has pre-built and just type in formula. You'll see right there, there's more formula items there. So you can see we have the formula handbook. That is what I was sharing. By clicking that, you can download it and set up a uh, dashboard with that view. You will find that there's a version. In this one, it's version 1.3. It's good to get the latest version and be aware of a new version has come out. Let's move on to these formulas. So there are five powerful formulas that I want to talk about today that are all really useful when you're designing a solution. The first one is index match and index collect. Many of you might be familiar with VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP, but index and index match um, is typically what we use in Smartsheet. It's more efficient on the sheet and it allows you to be able to be flexible to both go across and down. So it combines both a V and an H lookup. When I set up an index, it's important to know what am I going to use to find the information. Just like a V lookup, I am wanting to locate a specific row in a sheet and try to grab that by using the match. The match will go down, find my specific value and return the index with a specific index number and that index will return the number. So let's look at how index match works. Index is able to have a range, have a specific row index and an optional column index. So like I mentioned before, by default index is like a V lookup. It is able to take a specific range, then also a row index. And a lot of times we will put a match in there because the match will help us actually identify the value we want to retrieve. Column index is optional, so you could set up an index match match where you're not only looking up and down for a specific value, but you're also able to look across. This can be very powerful in situations where you're scanning across a table and needing to look across two dimensions for your value. So you can use match. And th what it, that is going to do is it's going to look for that specific value. So there's a search value in 
in Mesh where it's looking across that specific column or row for that value. Then the next part is the range that you're giving us. So you wanna make sure that that range consists of the specific value you're looking at. In this case, I'm looking for A and you can see that A is in here. It's really important then on the search type. So the search type needs to be zero to be exact. I recommend when using a mesh to just use zero. There are other options that you can look into, but almost every time we build up this formula, it's best just to be exact. And so we put zero right in there. Now you can see, I was looking for test A in here. So basically my sample data column is what I was looking across for the index. My match's job was to go across this and return a specific value. It was looking for A, so it returned two. And you can tell that because if I were to replace this entire match with just the number two, I would get back the same information. That's all it's really doing. Now that is one way to retrieve information, but sometimes you need to get more specific than that. Mash is great for one criterion, but what if you need to look with multiple criteria? Index Collect is more powerful than that because it is able to expand to capture as many criteria as you need. So let's say that you're looking across three different columns and you need to be exact on all of those. Index Collect is going to help you because it's going to return only the specific number you're looking for. Now, when you're working with index, it means that that collects job is to give you that specific list back. A lot of times when we set up a collect, we're really trying to only return one value. So in this case, at the end, we just put one. So before you saw that the mash actually was here where the one is, and it's trying to look across that whole range. In this case, collect is cutting down that range to be a specific item. And so when we're actually using the collect it is just going to bring back probably one item and the index will just grab that item off the top. Both are very powerful when it comes to searching across an array of information or a list. The next one I want to talk about is joy. So index is great at bringing back a specific value, but what if you want to bring back a list of values? That's where join is very powerful because what you can do is you can have join look across a whole column and then have it show every single value that's available. Another way that you can do this is that you can actually leverage collect inside join as well. So in this case, I have made a collect that just looks for the value A. That means that it's only going to bring back that text A. And you can see that's exactly what it does here. So let's say that I get rid of the collect. Let's say that I'm only wanting to look across that entire column like this. I get rid of the collect. I get rid of all this information here. And all I'm doing is doing a join. Now you can see what it does is it concatenates everything together. With join, I am also able to do something like char 10, which is the new line code. If I were to wrap that, you can see it stacks nicely. Now, why is it showing these spaces? That's because it is collecting every single one of these spaces as well as the specific values. If I were to add another value like this and see it coalescing. Now let's say I wanted to be more specific with my collect or my join. What I can do is I could say join distinct. And by the way, this can go into any formula that's collecting across a list like this. There, the distinct, you can see I have A, B, C, even though I have a second C, it's not showing that because that is not a distinct value. So countifs is a powerful formula that is able to look at multiple criteria. You see here in my countifs, I'm trying to look for the letter A, and then I'm also trying to look for the dropdown A. Only when these overlap, am I going to actually have one? So you could see here, even if I have A below, I still only have one. Only when I bring down that specific value, do I actually have two. So count us is extremely powerful being specific. And we find that to be really helpful when we're trying to build out formulas. Sometimes a count if can actually replace a match in our index formula, because what we could be doing is looking for how many of this specific criteria is here. And so there are a lot of ways where you can combine these different formulas to build out a powerful formula for your solution. Now, some is, is very similar to count us, except that instead of it, um, simply counting, what you would be adding is a sum here. So let's do that in real time here. 
In Smarshy, I can simply copy and paste. And then I'm going to change this to be a sum. So if this was a sum if, the sum value would be actually at the end. But since I have two criteria here, I'm going to actually add it here. You can see here the range and then criteria on range one, criteria on range two and so forth. You see in the brackets here, that means it's optional. But since I'm having these two, I'm already using that second set of criteria. So in here, I'm going to click on this notes and I click colon notes. Now, what have I done? I have within my sheet selected that specific column. My setting up a um, cross sheet reference where I'm looking at another sheet, I could do the exact same thing. But in this case, I don't want to leave the sheet. I'm trying to stay right in here. So that's zero. Why? Because right now it's looking here and here and there's nothing in there. Now, if I were to put 10 on this one, you'd see it's still zero. But now if I add five here, you'll see it adds to five. That's because it's only picking up numbers that are on its specific row. So let's say I add five as well to this one. You've seen my sum come to 10. You can see it happens in real time and it's very powerful when you set up on solutions. Now let's review contains. Contains is a powerful formula used within count ifs, indexes, drawings. It is used quite a lot to get specific information out of a cell. In our example here, I'm using an index collect, but I need to extract C and I would need to know which ones is C on. Now, if I were to say the range equals C, I would never actually get the value C because you could see A, B, and C are here. So what I want to do in this case is I want to use contains because contains will help me look for that letter C. Right here is my contains formula. It looks for, the search for is it looks for the letter C and as cell means that every single row within that range is going to be evaluated to see does it have the letter C. In our case, we have C right here on test C. But let's say we moved it. In this case, it's going to just go for the top one. So if I just added C to here, I'm not going to actually do test B. Why did it do that? Why did it go to B instead of my C right here? Well, that's because my index collect is going for the first value. So there's actually two values, two rows that satisfied my index collect. And that satisfied my collect, I should say. But index is only grabbing the top value. That's important to know because sometimes you'll set up a formula that made a human to only pick up one value, but there are more values in there. You have to be careful to make sure that your criteria is specific enough to grab the values you need. So all of these formulas can combine in different ways to build up very powerful solutions in Smartsheet. Though they may not be that simple, they can yield very simple results for users and results that make sense to users when you're going through and looking at the metrics of a solution. Now that you have a strong view of the most powerful formulas in Smartsheet, you can apply these to your solutions and design more effective formulas and workflows from them. Please watch our tutorial on Smartsheet to understand where you can apply these powerful formulas. If you like this video, please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.